Hey guys, who's in my hair? Back in another video, coming back at you with another installment of my redesign series. In our last redesign video, we took Goku and turned him into a steampunk character as if he was in a steampunk series. And in that video, I asked you guys if you guys would be interested in seeing Trunks in the same kind of fashion. The outcry turned real. A lot of you said to do the steampunk Trunks, and now in this video, we're doing a redesign of Trunks in a steampunk as series. <laughs> There I am, back with my own sound effects. <laughs> Trunks was a very interesting process because I hadn't drawn Trunks in a long time. And uh, you guys know that I've drawn Goku a few times in the past few months. Well, it isn't necessarily a style that's, uh, you know, too close to mine. And it's also a very close series to my heart. And uh, I don't know, I have a huge expectation when trying to draw these kinds of characters because I hold them to such a high standard. I know when drawing and especially doing fan arts, you're just supposed to kind of go about it and have fun. When it comes to these characters and these series, a lot of them I respect the artists and authors so much that I end up putting pressure on myself because I don't want to make the illustration of these series that I love so much end up looking bad. And Dragon Ball with the whole franchise and series is something that I definitely have that feeling when I go to draw the characters. Especially since the style is so unique, it's a little bit hard to merge it with your own style properly. If you don't do it right, it can end up looking a little wonky and stuff like that. That's why I decided with most of these fan arts, I'm just trying to have fun, go with the flow, and I'm not trying to exactly adapt what the character's style looked like from the original series. It's more so taking slight elements from the original style and putting them into mine a little bit, but it's mostly my style within the whole illustration. And that's actually a little bit of a base on how to actually create your own style when you're drawing. In order to start gaining your own style, you really do have to understand a lot about some form, fundamentals, and perspective, and stuff like that, in order to be able to kind of dissect and break down the styles that you're doing a lot easier. But in general, when you're drawing, your style tends to look like a style that you've been studying for a while, or you know, you've been taking influences from. What you end up doing to expand from that original inspiration of yours that ended up becoming your base you take your drawings and you start implementing small little things you like from other styles into your art and find a way to put it in there um, as an influence that makes it look good because there are ways to take things from styles and put it in your style that ends up not fitting very well and it makes it look a little wonky. But essentially that's a system in which you end up finding your own style. You take the current style that you have that was clearly influenced by a specific artist and you start implementing it from all these other inspirations and influences little by little so that way it's not a huge change to your original base because that might end up becoming a little bit confusing. One step at a time implementing small little things from other styles into your current style that you've already have a good fundamentals of and uh, you can draw pretty well is the way to create your own style and kind of diversify your drawings. The point where you start having enough experience and knowledge of all these kinds of styles that your style just ends up starting to kind of grow on its own without even necessarily studying other art per se. Uh, yeah, that's my Cliff Notes version on how to create your own style, but uh, at the end of the day, I would say that uh, most beginning artists should not be worrying too much about style because the truth is, a lot of time in order to have a really original style, you have to have a pretty good base and understanding of how to make 2D art in general. If you're one of those artists that are super worried about style, definitely don't worry about that too much right now because everybody started off somewhere and had influences when they first started to get good at drawing and then once they got good enough, they're able to branch off a little bit easier. Do enough digging and look deep enough into any artist that you really like, they ended up having very strong influences from the very beginning too. Their current style may not even look like their original influences because they've, you know, diversified their style so much throughout, you know, the knowledge that they've gained about art and just learning in general as they moved along in life. Like for me, one of my very first original inspirations is definitely Dragon Ball Z. And then we have Naruto as my second biggest inspiration of all time. I'm a Naruto. -ard. Oh yeah. <laughs> said Naruto was the second on the list, but it actually ranks in first when it comes to my influences in art. Dragon Ball Z is more so the gateway anime for me that will always have a certain place in my heart. But Naruto is the one that holds the top 
K because um, that's the series that really made me realize that I wanted to become a mangaka and do this as a living. And that's also the style that became my base for when I really started getting hardcore into drawing. Okay, so enough about that. Let's move on to what's going on in the drawing and the design of Steampunk. Trunks! One punch! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so in this one, unlike the Goku one, I did decide to put goggles on him. I didn't want to put it on his hair because I didn't want to ruin that, you know, cool little parted hair spiky look of Trunks's. I could have done it in a way that looked cool, but I just didn't want to touch that hair. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Trunks has that hair where it's just like, oh, yes, that's a good hairstyle. Why does it make me feel like this? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I do find it a little interesting that some hairstyles are just so appealing. Like, Trunks' hairstyle to me is very, very appealing. And it just has this design sense to it that it's so visually attractive with its shapes. And it makes you just like it so much. It can be broken down and understood through, you know, shape design and theories of shapes and how it works and stuff like that. Why, why certain shapes work with each other and all that stuff. But that's a whole other thing. I do have to say, when I was drawing the hair, I ended up erasing it quite a few times on those top poofs specifically because it ended up starting to become a little bit too long and it felt like some sort of stair steps that you would be able to walk up its hair or something. But that was definitely uh, nerve-wracking. I was having a uh, Naruto Black Clover arm anxiety. <laughs> I'm sure some of you got that reference. So as for the jacket, I was originally going with a slight little military looking jacket um, in the front part with like buttons going straight down, but I decided to not do it like that because I do that in so many characters and I actually recently did that with my uh, new design for my manga, the main character of my manga, I did that for him and I was like, uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that. So I ended up putting belt buckles down the sides instead of buttons. And now we're actually doing the sword. Um, I was originally, as you can see, I was trying to make it a jagged edge, but uh, I originally had the idea to just do a circular kind of like crest thing that's going on the sword that looks kind of steampunkish. I tried that first thing. I was like, yeah, this isn't working. So I just went with the original circular kind of idea on it. And this was a more of a spur of the moment thing. I didn't think about doing this from the very beginning, but halfway through it, I was like, you know what? I should probably try something like this because uh, there's another um, illustration that I did that was a commission and uh, I did something similar for that commission but it was a lot more um, hype for the sword there's a lot more steampunk to it uh, I kind of want to incorporate some of the design I did for that one on that sword but in general the whole sword is still like Trunks's sword from the series now we're just getting into shading in those belt buckles that I talked about just a little bit ago at times I have a hard time thinking about what um, you know shade everything should be here if I should make like the whole shirt black and stuff like that because creating a whole black shirt is kind of difficult when it comes to such a big portion of the you know design and with such a small pencil <laughs> But I mean, it's not impossible, and uh, I can do it. It's just like, for example, with uh, Trunks, I don't think like the whole top part of his jacket being black really fits his character per se. Black as in, you know, the black and white version of it, because uh, depending on the value of what you're drawing, it's either going to be black or white within a black and white illustration. For example, with Naruto, his blue is black on his jacket and when it's black and white, and then the orange is actually just white within the black and white. And that's one of the reasons why the orange and blue on my character that I just designed, I have to change the orange to a red because the orange would show up as a white and the light blue would show up as a white, which would leave it in the manga with very little contrast. So I had to change the orange to a red. One thing when coloring your character is very uh, important to think about the contrast when you're drawing them in black and white. And if you just decide to make something black that isn't supposed to be black in the black and white version, your character will end up looking a little bit off when people see him in the colored version. Because they won't imagine him with those specific kind of values on his outfit. So they'll be kind of like, oh, this looks kind of strange. <laughs> That's why it's good to make sure you pay attention to what you make white and what you make black in black and white. Kind of like, for example, his whole shirt here, it can't end up being a dark blue because if it was a dark blue it it wouldn't be this light in the black and white version 
It would essentially just have to be a white version of any of those colors, you know, blue, red, green, any any of those colors. So throughout this design, I ended up just trying to put in a lot of elements of those kind of gear notches within the illustration. Kind of like the patterning on his shoulder pads and then the patterning up on his sword a lot. I gave him these little black gloves that are short because I didn't want to give him super uh, like fat gloves at the, you know, wrist part because that was already on Goku and I didn't want it to be too similar to the Goku one. So originally for the pose, I wasn't sure if I was going to have him hold his sword or not, but I definitely do not regret having him hold his sword within this illustration. Because that sword is definitely a big part of his character, even though he can't even use it now, because who would it be effective in the universe currently? Like, what villain could he actually defeat with that that would be relevant, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure to say relevant, because he definitely could go defeat some sort of small-time villain with that sword, but you ain't gonna see him going up against Jiren with that sword. Like, what's that sword gonna do to Jiren? Give me a break. <laughs> It is kind of sad that the sword is really part of his iconic design, but it has no use in the Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super universe now. Blades are one of those things that end up becoming completely useless in every series if you kind of really look at it, like Naruto with shurikens and kunai, like no, no one actually kills anybody, hardly at all, in the actual series, maybe a flashback or something, but in the actual series, it has like no effect on anybody. <laughs> if you guys like my arts and want to help support what I do on this channel, you guys can check me out on my Patreon, link in the description to take this time to thank my current patreons aka Pelage, where my crown Daniel healer noah henderson maracuzio jt slow days alpha dog studios aaron mcquiston lacour david curtis 19 black dragon 89 ryan dope closet josh aguilera lance zoe monso malcolm x this guy Sewell, parthana thomas grim reefer spencer blake belcher carlos loza wes flinch grimoff alicio claro david jordan eden dobb johnny boy draws Aliyah williams i am dusty leo mcclintyre of the best pencil nomies there are. In any case, if you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to this channel, like you see, please subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified when each video comes out. And like always, guys, I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you guys in the next video.